My name is Scylla Mitchell. My husband was Cleveland Mark Mitchell. We were together for 34 years and married for 32. He was taken away from me on April the 26th, 2008. He was murdered by University of Texas Medical Branch in Galveston, Texas. The murder weapon was the Texas Tort Reform Act. It was passed into law 2003. What the bill did was overhaul civil litigation by placing a cap of $250,000 in what they call non-economical damages. This is the amount usually needed to generate lawsuits against hospitals in Texas. The end result in the state of Texas is about 98% of the lawyers in our state will not touch a malpractice case, even if it is obvious murder. The so-called Tort Reform Act is a legal weapon used by the medical community to murder its citizens without accountability. In the case of my husband, Cleveland Mark Mitchell, UTMB failed to deliver even the basic standard of care. Under Texas law, negligent homicide, also referred to as involuntary manslaughter, is killing another person through gross negligence or without malice. It is characterized as death caused by conduct grossly deviated from ordinary care. But grossly deviated from ordinary care, in this case there was no care at all. The end result of a 17 and a half hour stay was a blank ER chart. Failure to administer basic medical aid, then failure to be accountable they're trying to cover it up with bogus explanations. In my mind, that is murder. When the hospital's legal department sends a letter to me stating falsely that everything possible was done for my husband, then in my opinion, that is murder. The basic standard of care is the basic measurement of the adequacy of medical care, the recognized procedures for diagnosing and treating injuries and illnesses. The law recognizes that doctors and nurses and practitioners provide proper care to their patients. If what they do or don't do does not meet the basic standard of care, then the hospitals are liable for injuries and harm that result. In my husband's case, the chart was blank. The basic standard of care in the ear was never given. We arrived to the UTMB emergency room at 4.45 p.m. He was placed in the holding area about 5.30 p.m. About 6 p.m., a doctor and a few medical students walked in. Mark told the doctor he had abdominal pain. The doctor palpated his abdomen for less than 30 seconds. He ordered my husband a minimal dose of one milligram of morphine IV. The nurse came in a few minutes later, started the saline lock, and administered the morphine. That was it. That was it. Nobody ever returned to see if the morphine was effective. Nobody came to check on him, period. Nobody came to help him when I pleaded to the nurse who sat in front of the desk, he needed more for pain. Nobody came in when I told the nurse he tried to go to the bathroom and no longer could void. Nobody came in when I asked the nurse if he could see a doctor. And the end result was a blank ER chart because nobody did a thing. He literally was left forgotten in the ER. I was the only person in that hospital who knew he was there. I was the only person who even knew who he was.
7.30 a.m. and 8 a.m. the next morning. The nurse who had administered the one milligram of morphine was surprised to see us and asked, are you still here? Yeah, we were. At about 10.15 that morning, a nurse aide came in and took a set of vital signs. That was all that was done during the duration of a 17 and a half hour stay in the ER except for the minimal dose of morphine the evening before. When he arrived to the sixth floor, he was being wheeled to his room by stretcher and I heard one of the nurses tell another and he came up to us without labs, x-rays, without nothing. When my husband was in his room, he was in renal shutdown, had a cardiac condition due to his potassium level being high and suffered a stroke. After he died, I tried to get answers and accountability. I took my husband's chart to Senator Mike Jackson and asked him why he was left to rot in the ER. He had no answers. I took my plight to Congressman Ron Paul. Again, I asked the same thing. He too did not have any answers. I wrote to Governor Rick Perry, the governor who signed a 2003 Tort Reform Act, but I still did not receive any answers. I wrote to the Texas Medical Board and every legal agency having power to look into this matter. Still no answer. I wanted to know what a seven-day post-abdominal hernia repair patient who was admitted to the ER with acute abdominal pain with his medical records in their computer database was left to rot in their ER. The 2003 Texas Tort Reform Act was the murder weapon used to kill my husband in the hands of UTMB Galveston, Texas. Senator Mike Jackson, Congressman Ron Paul, Dr. David Callender, President of UTMB, and Governor Rick Perry, who signed the 2003 Texas Tort Reform Act, all failed to be accountable and covered up my husband's death with silence. Under the Texas Penal Code 19.05, a person commits criminally negligent homicide if he causes death to an individual by criminal negligence under Penal Code 6.03, parentheses D. Part of the definition of Homicide is it is characterized as a death by conduct which is deviated from ordinary care. My husband not only did not receive the basic standard of care, but a blank chart supports my accusation he failed to, re he failed to receive care at all. The people I have mentioned and the agencies involved knew they could get away with murder, and they did. The Texas 2003 Tort Reform Act made it an impossibility to take them to court. They were free and still are free to get away with murder because of this act. Imagine this happening to your loved one, someone you cherish more than life itself. And then maybe you too can call it murder in your heart.